the Montana legislature has just passed a final bill that would ban TikTok within the borders of the state of Montana. No one in Montana would be able to use TikTok, and if companies tried to help them or, or ByteDance or anyone put it in there, they would be subject to severe penalties. And this has not gone to the signature of, uh, for, or to the governor for a signature yet, but it is headed to his desk, and the governor has already signed one anti-TikTok bill and has expressed uh, concerns that, about TikTok and seems to be very anti-TikTok. So it does look like this may be the first bill in the United States to actually ban TikTok. Will this bill be upheld, and will uh, TikTok ultimately be kicked out of the state of Montana so no one there can use it? I'm Kevin Newper. I'm an attorney at Newper & Covey, and I want to walk you all through what this bill says, uh, what what the likelihood of, of this becoming law is, and what the chances of the law surviving are when it goes to court, because it will be going to court. Okay, so here is the final bill. This is what, uh, it's it's pretty short, but I want to walk you all through what it sells, says and what uh what this is going to do. So it says it's a bill for an act entitled an act banning TikTok in Montana. And you can see that there's this little slashed out part. That's because uh, this is actually like the, the second version of this bill, SP Senate Bill 419. Uh, they've made a few edits to this. And so the stuff that's crossed out is from an earlier version. It will not be in the final law. So they changed the title uh, to saying that it prohibits or prohibiting a mobile application store from offering the TikTok application to Montana users Providing for penalties, providing for enforcement authority, blah, 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 providing for a lot of things. And uh, this is basically uh, what they're targeting, the way they're trying to kick it out, is to make sure that it can't be in any kind of app store. Like Apple couldn't put it in the app store. You would, they, they're going after kind of the big phone company people um, who would be the means by which you would install TikTok on your phones. And if you're not allowed to, you know, install the application, then what, you're never going to be able to use it. So... This this has what's uh, this is kind of like a preamble is what it would be called. You see the, all these things that say whereas those are not really part of the law, but they're there for interpretation in the future. Um, they are designed to state kind of what was the intention of the legislature and the people who vote for this when they're passing it. So this says whereas the People's Republic of China is an adversary of the United States and Montana and has an interest in gathering information about Montanans, Montana companies, and the intellectual property of users to engage in corporate and international espionage. So what is that? If you don't know what the People's Republic of China is, that's the formal na name for the government of China. Uh, and when I say China, I'm talking about kind of the big China. Uh, there's a dispute. There's another Republic of China, which is what the official name of Taiwan is. And there's a whole thing about are those two separate countries or one country or what? Uh, uh, they both disagree on that subject, obviously. And uh, But when they say People's Republic of China, they are talking about the country you would traditionally think of as China. Um, it says, whereas TikTok is a wholly owned subsidiary of ByteDance, a Chinese corporation, whereas the People's Republic of China exercises control and oversight over ByteDance, like other Chinese corporations, and can direct the company to share user information, including real-time physical locations of users. And whereas TikTok gathers significant information from its users, accessing data against their will to share with the Pe People's Republic of China. So they're basically saying uh, ByteDance is this Chinese company. The government of China is like all up in the business of its com its businesses, uh, which is actually true. Um, they're, they have a lot of concern that this data is going to be used uh, against American citizens because we are in kind of a big rivalry right now with the People's Republic of China. And this says, whereas TikTok fails to remove and may even promote dangerous content that directs minors to engage in dangerous activities... And these, some of these are kind of crazy, including but not limited to throwing objects at moving automobiles, taking excessive amounts of medication, lighting a mirror on fire, and then attempting to extinguish it using only one's body parts. I have not seen that challenge. I hope no one tries to do that. Uh, inducing unconsciousness through oxy oxygen deprivation. Actually, absolutely something not to do if you are younger. Do not do something that is utterly stupid. Cooking chicken in NyQuil. I don't know how that would taste <laughs> or if that what that even is. Uh, pouring hot wax on a user's face. Again, don't do that. Attempting to break an unsuspecting passerby's skull by tripping him or her into landing face first into a hard surface. Placing metal objects in electrical outlets. Swerving cars at high rates of, rates of speed. Smearing human feces on toddlers. Licking doorknobs and toilet seats to place oneself at risk of contracting coronavirus. Attempting to climb stacks of milk crates. That is actually extremely dangerous. Don't do that one. Shooting passerby with air rifles loosening lug nuts on vehicles, and stealing utilities from public places. So, uh, the legislature of Montana does not like any of your challenges, teenagers. They are very against them. And frankly, uh, every one of these pretty much sounds like a horrible idea, uh, like <laughs> varying levels of horrible, uh, but these are not things that you really want to do. Um, so, 
but they're basically saying TikTok is like causing teenagers to do dumb things. Now, do teenagers in general always do dumb things? Well, I did when I was a teenager, uh, but this does look like this is sort of excessively dumb and they're tr transmitting dumb ideas. I'm not sure that's a reason to ban it, but that is uh, one of the things they're saying. This is why I don't like it because I don't want you like cooking chicken in NyQuil or, or, or lighting mirrors on fire. How you, how you light a mirror on fire, I don't know. Um, then it uh, says, whereas TikTok stealing of information and data from users and its ability to share that data with the Chinese Communist Party unacceptably infringes on Montana's right to privacy. And whereas TikTok's continued operation in Montana serves as a valuable tool to the People's Republic of China to conduct corporate and international espionage in Montana and may allow the People's Republic of China to track the real-time locations of public officials, journalists, and other individuals adverse to the Chinese Communist Party's interests, and whereas TikTok's allowance and promotion of dangerous challenges threatens the health and safety of Montanans being enacted by the legislature of the state of Montana. And so now we get to the substance of the actual law and not just all the absurd challenges that apparently some users on TikTok have been coming up with. Okay, so this part of the bill is what actually becomes the law. That first part we're looking at is just the legislature saying, here's why I'm doing it. Um, then you get to the part that where they actually pass, um, you know, the, the, what can and can't be done and what is actually the law. And again, again, you see things crossing out so you can see where they made some of these changes uh, here when they were doing this. So this says, uh, so the first section is prohibition penalty enforcement definition. So what's it doing? It says, TikTok may not operate within the territorial jurisdiction of Montana. An entity violates this prohibition when any of the following occurs within the territorial jurisdiction of Montana. A, the operation of TikTok by the company or users, or uh, B, the option to download the TikTok mobile application by a mobile application store. So this is saying that if, if you do either of these things, if you either um, are operating TikTok, and that's a company or the users, or you are someone who has a um, provides the option to download TikTok specifically via a mobile application store. So they're presumably, you know, you could allow it to operate or allow people to download it through other means like sticking it on via a wire or a USB cable or something, um, but not through a mobile application store. I'm not sure if they thought of that, but, you know, if teenagers can think of how to light a mirror on fire, they are probably going to find ways to get this app on their phone where they're driving out of Montana to, you know, they may be all driving off the, uh, across the border somewhere or who knows what they'll what they'll be doing. Now, the next section here is what happens if somebody violates this? What happens if, you know, so it says an entity that violates a provision of this section is liable in the amount of $10,000 for each discrete violation and is liable for an additional $10,000 each day thereafter that the violation continues. So what does that mean? First of all, it has to be an entity. So it cannot be an entity, an entity, entity uh, let me make sure there's no, de there's no definitions of this, but um, I think that an entity is probably not going to include a person. Uh, and there is a later, they, they kind of say this a, a little down there. They say penalties in this section do not apply to users of TikTok. So when they're talking about entities, they're talking about corporations. It says if an entity violates a provision of this section, they're liable for $10,000 for each discrete violation. What is a discrete violation? So every, for example, every time someone operated TikTok, it had to be a company, but, um, or like every download, so if uh, or, or option to download, if you if you violate by allowing an option to download the TikTok mobile application, it could be ten thousand dollars every time someone download downloads it, and it says they're liable for an additional ten thousand dollars each day each day thereafter that the violation continues. That's for basically if you're operating the uh, like an app store. Now somebody Apple or someone may just decide, you know what. So what? I'm just going to pay ten thousand dollars a day. Now, if it's ten thousand dollars to download, that's a very different story. Um, this set, and I think some of this may be different. You know, if Apple uh, bans it, uh, that that amount of ten thousand dollars a day might be enough to deter. You know, it could be three point six million a year, and so smaller companies that are trying to get around this are just going to get nuked if they try to do that. Um, then it says it's an affirmative dis defense to this section if the violating entity could not have reasonably known that the violation occurred within the territorial jurisdiction of Montana. What does that mean? First of all, an affirmative defense is um, like, let's say you're getting sued by the state of Montana or sued by anyone. An affirmative defense is a defense to something where the defendant has the burden of proof. So uh, it's a type of defense where you have to prove it as the defendant. 
um, in, you know, some things the plaintiff has to prove in uh, affirmative defense is something a defendant has to prove. And what is this defense? It says, if you couldn't reasonably know, hey, this, this person, you know, this teenager is off in Montana, they see this mirror, they're like, I'm going to, you know, film myself cooking chicken at NyQuil, and then I'm going to throw it on the mirror and burn it and put it out with my nose or something or whatever, you know, the chicken NyQuil nose mirror challenge. Uh, then, uh, the, the really even just downloading it. So someone is, is downloading the teenager downloads the TikTok app, top app, talk app so they can do their crazy challenge. That act of the download, uh, is a $10,000, uh, fine. If the, like say Apple could know that that teenager is inside Montana. Now, if there's like, uh, uh, an effort to sort of like a VPN, uh, that is a virtual private network that is designed to mask your IP address. An IP address is kind of like a phone number for your computer. You all have one, even if you don't know you have one, that's how you're connecting. And it's in a way to identify who you are. And so if Apple sees an IP address that's coming from South Dakota or Texas or New York or something, um, and that teenager is actually in Montana, then this is a defense to that. So it keeps Apple from having to like try to track down more than just at the IP level um, of where the people are. Montana IP address, they're going to be like, okay, you can't use this anymore. Then this says, the penalties under this section do not apply to law enforcement activities, national security interests and activities, security research activities, or essential government uses permitted by the governor on the information technology system of the state. So basically, the, you can't use it, but the government can do whatever it wants. And that will probably sound familiar to anyone. Uh, then it says, the penalties do not apply to users of TikTok. So you, the user, could violate this law. Uh, you operate TikTok. But none of this this penalty here does not apply to it or to you. So the teenager would not have to pay $10,000, um, but the Apple Apple would. And this says, The Department of Justice shall enforce the provisions of this section. As used in this section, the following definitions apply. A, discrete violation. Uh, here's actually a definition of this. means each time that a user accesses TikTok, is offered the ability to access TikTok, or is offered the ability to download TikTok. So they've actually defined this. Usually it comes first, but it looks like it was last year. Um, so every time you access TikTok, there is a violation of this that could be $10,000. And so if someone is helping you do it, that's $10,000. Just literally turning it on is going to charge Apple or somebody $10,000. Or you offer them ability your ability to download. So it, the Apple Store would be $10,000 to download. Um, VPN that was designed for this might be uh, $10,000. And frankly, they might even be able to sue a VPN company because they would know that you're in Montana if they had the ability to know, um, hey, you know, <laughs> you, that you are using TikTok. Um, entity, again, is not is defined specifically. It is not a person. It is a mobile application store or TikTok. So actually, they've excluded kind of any company that is not a mobile application store um, from this. But they, I think they are targeting what they view as a choke point. So the application store for most people is going to be, um, I, I think, the average person probably will not be able to figure out how to get TikTok on their phone without some kind of app store on the phone. Uh, it's a little harder with, with, with like an iPhone. It's actually real hard to like mess around with the applications without going through it. Um, for an Android phone, you might be able to do that a little more, but then also you uh, kind of have to be a little techie to do that. So someone has to help you. And if, if they're not, then you're either driving to South Dakota or someplace or you're, um, you know, not using it. So um, it says mobile application means type of software designed to run on a mobile device. That's just the definition for this app store. Um, territorial jurisdiction means all places subject to the criminal jurisdiction of Montana, which is going to be Montana. And then they, def they define TikTok. So they're using that here. So who's TikTok? The social net networking service owned by the Chinese company ByteDance Limited or any successors. Successors means someone who... Um, they call it succeeding to an interest. Like if you sell something to someone else, you are the successor, the successor in interest, they would also call it. Um, so this does apply. Not If ByteDance tries to sell it to another Chinese company, then they're stuck with it. Um, but they, there is a little uh, provision here, this contingent voidness. We'll look at that in a second. So this codification instruction is just like, here's where we're going to put it in all our laws and how we're going to reference it. Severability. Um, so... This, this severability is something, and this is in, you'll see this in like any contract you sign, usually a severance clause that says if if part of it gets knocked out, everything else is in. So this says each part of this act is severable. Uh, if any part of this act is invalid, illegal, or unenforceable, all valid parts remain in effect. 
If a part of this act is invalid in one or more of its applications, only those applications may be void, and the remaining valid applications remain in effect as severable from the invalid applications and parts. So they, what they're trying to do there is they know there's going to be court challenges to this, and so they want to make sure, okay, if a court goes up here and says, oh, you know, this part of the law, this A, is is for the users is not allowed, that's unconstitutional, but then this B is allowed, um, if you don't have the severance clause, then the, the court might strike down the whole law. But with the severance clause, clause, all the court can do if it finds part of it to be unconstitutional is knock that part out. So that's kind of a defense that they're they're prepping into this because they know the court challenge is coming. And then they have um, what's called contingent voidness. So this provision says that this act is void if TikTok is acquired by or sold to a company that is not incorporated in any other country designated as a foreign adversary in 15 CFR 7.4 at the time TikTok is sold or acquired. So this is talking about a regulation that's, that says certain countries are adversaries of the U.S. That'd be places like North Korea. I think the, the Venezuelan government is one, Cuba. Um, so if, if uh, TikTok sells the company, like ByteDance rather, so ByteDance sells TikTok or the U.S. part of TikTok to anybody who's not in China and not in Cuba and not North Korea, any, you can't be a country on that list, but if they sell it to Mark Zuckerberg, who probably really wants to buy uh, TikTok right now or sell it to Facebook or sell it to Google or anybody who's not, who's like in the US or, or like in France or something like that, this whole act just goes away. So part of this, I think what, part of what they are trying to do and what the US government is trying to do is to force this sale. I think this is something that the federal government wants to do. And I think Montana is sort of jumping on the bandwagon and we may see, see states following this law with their own version of it because the more states try to ban TikTok, uh, the more worthless it, worthless it is if you don't sell it to someone who is not the Chinese government or not, not in China because, um, you know, it is true that the Chinese government sort of treats companies, you know, it's a communist system. They treat companies like they basically are the government. They uh, do, do engage in a lot of esp espionage in the United States. They're, the concern is not invalid that they're talking about here. Uh, I do think it's kind of crazy to ban this whole app. You know, they, the federal government can go force this sale. They can break it up. They have a lot of powers. That's really probably the avenue they should be pursuing that doesn't disrupt everyone because I think users of TikTok are going to freak. There are a lot of those users and a lot of voters. And they may, you know, their, their biggest problem is trying to figure out who to vote against because uh, this Montana bill is being passed by Republicans, but then Joe Biden and the Democrats are doing, they want to do the same thing. Uh, the federal bill is co-sponsored by Democrats and Republicans. And so who do you vote against if everyone is doing this? That's kind of the, the safety in numbers idea is that, well, we'll go piss everyone off, but what are they going to do about it? I'm your government and you're stuck with me. And so um, I do think that the sale is where the end game of this is. Will there be disruption or not? You can see that they put the effective date as January 1st, 2024. So that if this gets passed, say, uh, end of the month, I don't, I don't know how long it'll take to go to the governor and have him make a decision. He has said, oh, I'm considering it and given vague, you know, mushy language about what he'll do. It does kind of seem like he, that I, I suspect, and this is just a suspicion, that this probably would not have made it through the Montana Senate if he was going to veto it. If the governors of a state usually have influence within their own party, and, and Montana's a pretty, pretty Republican place, if you don't know that, it's kind of like dominated by Republicans. Um, so... The, the governor could probably have killed this just by going and talking to the people in the Montana legislature if he wanted to. So this this is likely something that he does want to do, and we will see if it is. It is not actually law yet, but if it is, then this this will be the law. And and so what are the chances on a legal appeal? I want to talk to you about a couple of the issues people are tossing around as to ways that people might want to try to challenge this. So there are a couple of uh, potential challenges that people are tossing around that they may raise to this law. And I'm sure this is going to be fought, fought over. Um, the first one is the First Amendment. That's probably the one that comes to mind uh, immediately to you or to anyone who kind of uh, knows anything about the law. You've heard, you know, I've got a First Amendment right. So does that uh, does that right stop this law from being passed? Maybe. Um, what This is sort of probably going to end up as a classic law, school, law student uh uh, I'm sure some professors are running out uh, law, law school, school exams frantically as we speak because we are coming up maybe on about a month before they'll have to do it. And so if you're a law student, you better be studying the TikTok law because if I was a professor, I'd stick this one right on my con law uh, exam. And the question is, um, will be, is this a reasonable what they call a time, place, manner restriction? 
So there is law basically saying, and this kind of gets real complex, so I actually don't know which way this will turn out, um, uh, but, you know, it, it, I would say probably leans towards it's going pa to pass muster under it, but you, I think really uh, this is something that you can, you know, <laughs> it, it, it is a, you can make pretty strong arguments either way. Um, time, place, manner means that the government can make reasonable restrictions on uh, your right to speak, or, or not on your right to speak as to the content, but as of what you're saying. So content of what you're saying would be like, or your expression would be, um, you know, if I'm this video, right? Like I'm talking about TikTok, the government can't say you aren't allowed to criticize this Montana law. You, you cannot do that, but they can make uh, restrictions on the time, the place, and the manner of the, of your speech if it passes certain levels of what are called scrutiny. So they have strict scrutiny, they have intermediate scrutiny, and then they just have sort of regular scrutiny. Um, and the scrutiny is just how, like how, how tough is the court when it's looking at it? And those are all sort of real complex and probably be a very long video to go through that. Maybe I'll, one day I'll do a, a common law <laughs> video video on this stuff. But um, basically the court is going to decide first, like what level of, how, how far should I be in, in, in reviewing this law? And then is the, the state of Montana making a reasonable restriction on uh, not the content? Because this doesn't say you can't like cook your chicken in NyQuil and tell everyone it's great and then start drinking it or whatever they do with it or, or light yourself on fire or anything these people are doing. Uh, but it does, the law says because they're doing this stupid stuff in part and because of the Chinese government, uh, we're going to restrict people from using this particular app. So that's really not a restriction on what you're doing. You could probably go to YouTube and do this and, and do, you know, I don't know if YouTube allows it, but uh, maybe doesn't push it as much. Um, but uh, you, you're, they're restricting uh, like kind of the manner. So this traditionally comes up like uh, because traditional First Amendment was not on social media. It was just like in front of a courthouse or in front of a, the government that people would be um, standing in front of the, uh, you know, a, a public building and yelling and having signs and, and doing protests. And so that would be the traditional free speech that governments would try to regulate. And they would say things like there, there are, are a bunch of laws about like, oh, can you do it at a certain time? So the government, if they the more they allow you like another alternate option, the more that it would pass scrutiny under this stuff, right? Like they might say only from the hours of 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. And then after that, you can't protest in front of our building or because there's a residential area near, nearby and that disrupts the neighborhood or whatever. Or they have to have some kind of reasoning. Um, but how how deeply the court looks into the reasoning, it's, and that's why you were seeing it, is they're, they're making sure, hey, we gave several reasons why we're doing this. Um, the... the those kind of restrictions are what people would do, or they say you can do it on the steps of my building, but you can't like go into the Capitol and wear your like shaman headdress or whatever and start start yelling. They, they, so that's a place restriction, right? You can come to maybe the, the foyer of Congress, but you can't bring weapons or you can't like, you know, your, your signs aren't a lot. They, might, they could even say like, you can't bring signs, but you can go talk or you can come in and talk, but you can't bring a microphone and, and audio equipment because it gets too loud. And it's all stuff like that, that, is the traditional type of regulation that uh, governments would try to pass. And this probably is going to be considered kind of one of those. Um, and so the question for the courts will be, is this reasonable or is it sort of unreasonable? Are they, are they, is, is the Montana government going a little too far? I think probably the key to that analysis is going to be this question of kind of like what alternatives are there? Because one of the things they're supposed to be looking at, the court will, supposed, will be looking at, this probably would go to the U.S. Supreme Court, um, is like, is this, it's something called narrowly tailored. So was, was this uh, law narrowly, narrowly tailored to the objectives that the legislature uh, states if they're sort of legitimate objectives? And so um, I think TikTok would probably argue, at least as to the crazy challenges uh, rule, like you, it might be, <laughs> there might be other ways to narrow this than banning the app entirely because teenagers will just go do this on YouTube or some other place. Uh, they might restrict the algorithm. They might do something like that. Um, the, the, for the Chinese government thing, it's hard to get around that. Um, but then there might also be more narrow ways to do this than banning it, like restricting what kind of information they can collect or having a privacy type law. So I think that's probably like TikTok's best, um, argument on this is to, to say you went too far. You, a ban is like extreme. You're clearly, um, targeting TikTok, the company, because no one else is included in this. Uh, what other Chinese companies are you, are like, are you banning here? You're only going after us. Um, but really to say, um, you, you could have done this more narrowly and you are just hitting, you know, a fly with a sledgehammer kind of thing. Um, 
Will that succeed? I don't know. And part of the problem with gaming this out, I think, is the um, the Supreme Court is now kind of dominated by Republicans. Um, they tend to be more aggressive on this TikTok issue, at least vocally and publicly. I do think that this kind of is both parties. The ones yelling the loudest are the Republicans, um, but it's it's clearly everybody. Um, and so um, will the Supreme Court just kind of roll over and make it, you know, they can rule in ways that will uh, make sure that this ban stays in place. And if that happens, then the sale of TikTok probably, you know, from ByteDance probably is going to happen um, because are they just going to let it blow up? Um, maybe, but <laughs> it seems it seems unlikely. And frankly, that sale can be forced. It can. There, there are legal ways that the federal government is looking at trying to do that. And th those, um, you know, or, or they can do it through sort of antitrust style litigation. Um, but ByteDance may not be able to control what happens when you're in the U.S. and sort of on our turf. As, as the government would view it. Um, so that is, that is one challenge. That is one effort that they may do it. And the other one, the reason I have this case pulled up is it's a little interesting. Uh, uh, something that people may not have heard of as much is a Commerce Clause challenge. So the Commerce Clause is another part of the Constitution. You probably don't hear about it that much, but it, it uh, or regular people don't deal with this ever, <laughs> but because you're not, you know, you are doing commerce, but it doesn't really like affect you as much. Um, the Commerce Clause is a part of the Constitution that says that the regulation of interstate commerce, that is commerce that goes between states. What is commerce? If you don't know that, commerce is basically just any kind of like business type activity, selling goods, selling stuff, buying stuff, you know, subscribing to stuff, watching your Netflix videos that you pay for. If it's money and it's moving around and stuff's moving around and services are moving around, uh, then it's commerce. And so anytime it happens across state lines, so you cross the state line, uh, the federal government is the one who's supposed to be in charge of regulating what can and can't happen. And states are not supposed to be able to put up barriers to commerce between uh, the like the different states. Now, this is a long, you, you know, actually took an entire class on the Commerce Clause and, and, and what it means and what really like what is interstate commerce, because the definition of what this is has changed a number of times over the years. There was this decision called Lochner uh, that was kind of like a whole area where era where this kind of right-wing court uh, was was very aggressive about using the Commerce Clause to strike down laws, uh, and then it switched back, and then sort of the more liberal uh, parts of the Supreme Court uh, totally like dismantled the Commerce Clause effectively, where basically it can't be used as much under their their way to um, to to, uh, to knock laws down because they wanted to sort of increase federal power. That's just a debate about like should should the federal government or states have more power? That's sort of an ongoing debate from the very beginning of our country that has gone on forever. Um, but the question becomes, can you use the Commerce Clause? Because you can attack uh, laws and particularly state laws. So that this this switchback does not really, it's, it's not as strong for attacking state laws as for federal laws. Um, but I, so can this challenge succeed? I don't know. I think it may be a better or, or definitely a decent one that they should be looking at. I pulled up a case that uh, this is uh, from... Uh, the Ninth Circuit. And so if you don't know, um, in the federal court system, every state is sort of organized into what are called circuits. And the circuits are uh, courts of appeal. So after a trial has been had or, or a decision by a judge, um, final decision, uh, in this case, I don't know if you'd have a, like, probably not a jury trial, but you'd go have a judge decide the constitutionality of the law. And then that would be the decision. And then it would go up to the appeals court. And it goes to this appeals court, which is the Ninth Circuit, because Montana is part of the Ninth Circuit. It's where I am as well. I'm in California. So California and a lot of the Western states are all kind of mushed into this circuit. And there's a bunch of them, uh, but a bunch of circuits. But, but this is the one whose law is going to be binding at first. And then it goes to the Supreme Court and they just do whatever they want because they're the Supreme Court. Um, but this case was uh, interesting and on point because it's about foie gras. Uh, it would, and it's about a ban on this in uh, California for animal cruelty. If, if you don't know what that is, that's like stuffing ducks with food until they like are burst and, and they're just so fat from from their livers get like much fattier if you just keep stuffing food into them. And so it is kind of a cruel um, way to treat animals, but they have them locked up and don't let them move and do all this stuff. So California banned that. And the question was, can they ban that? And the Ninth Circuit said yes. I'll walk you all through a little a little bit of this opinion because it does have some stuff that outlines how could you challenge a law uh, when a state bans something and, and what might be a way to challenge it. So here's a part, the part of this case that I think uh, starts, it, uh, it starts analyzing the, what's called the Dormant Commerce Clause, which is a, 
uh, it explains this here. And you can see the arguments that they made in this case. I will not even try to pronounce the name of this case. It is in French. I am a Texan. Uh, I My pronunciation skills are horrible, especially for foreign languages, because Texans, there's nothing we love more than adding syllables to words and dra drawing them out as much as possible, and it will be a disaster. So we, we'll call it like Bonta. Bonta is easy to say, I think. It's probably, I'm probably wrong on that too. But uh, this says... But they appealed, so they, they're arguing against the sales ban of foie gras, and they say um, that the the they argue that this the sales ban is unconstitutional because it one impermissibly regulates out of state commerce and conduct, and two unduly burdens interstate commerce. And and this explains what is this dormant commerce clause here, right uh, right here. So it says the dormant commerce commerce clause stems from our understanding that the commerce clause implicitly preempts state laws that regulate commerce in a manner that is disruptive to economic activities in the in the nation as a whole. So they call it dormant because it's like not really there. There's a lot of language uh, that courts use to like find things in the Constitution that aren't there. They'll call them. Uh, there's one famous phrase where uh, Justice Douglas, I believe he's an old, he, he's gone now, but in the 70s, he was he would say that rights were emanating in the penumbra of the Constitution. And lawyers love really smart sounding or phrases that or phrases they think make them sound smart uh, and this one dormant just means it's sort of sleeping uh so the idea is like uh this it's implicit it's not okay it's not there but that's sort of part of what it implies by having this right and that does kind of make sense that you know if 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 we're going to make the uh, encourage interstate commerce and have the federal government regulate it then that probably stops states from trying to just like disrupt commerce with other states or economics activities in the whole country, you probably can't do stuff like that. And so they say there's two primary principles that mark the boundaries of a state's authority. And here, because it's a Montana law, this, this federal constitutional provision does put boundaries on what they can and can't do. It says, first, state regulations may not discriminate against interstate commerce. And second, states may not impose undue burdens on interstate commerce. A state law may also violate uh, the dormant commerce clause when it one has extraterritorial effects or two regulates activities that are inherently national or require a uniform system of regulation. So these are kind of the different ways that you could violate this dormant commerce clause, this implicit rule that you can't disrupt nationwide economic acti activity with one state's law. So it says that states, state laws that effectively burden only out-of-state businesses because there are no comparable in-state businesses, are not necessarily discriminatory. The sellers do not argue against the sales ban on that basis. Instead, they argue that the sales ban is extraterritorial extra in its practical effect and burdens interstate commerce in a way that is clearly excessive in relation to its putative local benefits. What are all those legal terms? Extraterritorial means outside my territory. So if you're Montana, in your territory is Montana, extraterritorial is all the other states. Um, and Putative just means sort of like, like the supposed local benefits uh, that they're saying that the law will create. This, uh, so they say uh, in this Ninth Circuit case, they rejected the, uh, these arguments basically, but it doesn't necessarily mean you couldn't make them here with TikTok because it's a little bit different than this kind of force feeding ducks scenario. Um, so this says that uh, although states may not mandate compliance, and, and we're, when we're reading this, we're talking about um, this this concept of can a ban on something, a ban on a product in a state, uh, be a ban because it affects like out of, what's happening out of state? And that's for TikTok, it's kind of a good argument and different than ducks because a duck is like you know, if you're selling duck meat or whatever in a state, you can ship it in, you ship it out. You don't necessarily like someone in Iowa, which is one of the kind of the worst animal cruelty states, but uh, Iowa could you know kill all the ducks at once and ship them around anywhere else or whatever, um, and it wouldn't affect their ability to do that to ban it in California. It might affect their sales, but it wouldn't like stop you from doing it in, in Iowa. With TikTok, I think there is a fair argument that this is really a nationwide app that needs to function the same way in all states. Um, you have to do a bunch of technical changes to maybe even make this work. The only feasible way that I can think of is sort of flagging IP addresses, but those are not going to be entirely, they'll be very inaccurate. Uh, and you doing this may interfere kind of with the way the app actually works. If you are, if they're trying, if the app stores are trying to impose restrictions on certain states uh, for certain apps, it's going to become, um, it, it, I don't know, I assume it can be done technically, but it may cause problems with the other states or with how things work because 
uh, who knows if the IP address is crossed or if data goes in and out of the state for a server in Montana? Does that mean like if the if if the TikTok data is bouncing to a server located in Montana, then have you violated this law? And how does the the company know if the server like is there or not? Where's the data going? This is going to be pretty complex. And so they they can probably make a fair tech, tech or technical argument that this is very different, right? You are burdening the out of state activities in ways that a duck meat ban would not. Um, so th this, in this case, they said uh, states are, are, are free to regulate in-state sales without such regulation being unconstitutional for its extraterritorial extra effect um, because uh, they're free to regulate commerce and contracts within their boundaries with the goal of influencing the out-of-state choices of market participants. So basically, you, can, you can't make people do stuff out of state, but California can try to uh, stop people from doing this to ducks and Montana can try to influence people out of the state, like try to get other people to not use TikTok um, as long as they're not directly regulating it. Now that's the question here is, is this actually beyond that because it's, it might affect the use of TikTok to try to implement this as a technical matter. And so that's going to be kind of that question if they try to argue that. Then the second argument that they do, they, they do, which I think probably this may be the better place to shoehorn this stuff in, is that that it's arguing that uh, a law violates the dormant commerce clause because it unduly burdens uh, interstate commerce, which is these activities uh, going on between the states. And they say that in the district court, which is the trial court, uh, there wouldn't have been, a, uh, I'm not sure, with, with this kind of law, if you're challenging unconstitutionality, there's not actually, there's a bench trial maybe, um, but then a bench trial is uh, before the judge. So you go and present all your evidence to the judge and the judge decides. And it seems like probably what would happen here. Um, but then... This says that the district court here determined that the sellers had shown no cognizable uh, burden on interstate commerce and recognizing California's legitimate local interest in public health and preventing animal cruelty. And, and that just means there's no like sort of uh, burden that is real and that you can sort of think of that, the, that on interstate commerce. Um, and this explains some of the legal standards for how a court would consider this. So in the Ninth Circuit, and that's actually a Supreme Court case that deciding, uh, I kind of know all these little citation, what these little numbers and letters mean. Uh, so the, this Wayfair thing is a Supreme Court case. State laws that regulate even handedly to effectuate a uh, legitimate local public interest will be upheld unless the burden imposed on such con commerce is clearly excessive in relation to the putative local benefits. What does that mean in regular person? Um, basically, it's saying that uh, if you regulate something even handedly, which means sort of I'm not uh, you know, discriminating or whatever against different companies. Now that, that may be the problem here. Uh, you know, it's just TikTok. On the other hand, uh, there's no other real social network owned by the Chinese government. Um, but uh, if, if the only way you can, the, the law is upheld, if the, law, if the law is upheld, that means the court says it is constitutional. You do get to ban TikTok. If the law is struck down, then that means you cannot ban TikTok. And so th this says that they will uphold the law unless the burden it imposes on commerce is clearly excessive in relation to the benefits, so the local benefits, the ones in Montana. So the the Montana government in, in this law, they have identified these benefits as no putting out fires on mirrors and breaking people's skulls and doing, you know, trying to choke yourself and all this other stuff that these people are, are doing and no, um, no Chinese government. <laughs> so, so those are kind of the two, uh, two uh, benefits that they're, they're saying are, are, uh, benefit the state of Montana is and, and would occur there. So you, the court will look at those benefits and go, is the burden that is being imposed on nationwide commerce e excessive in relation to those benefits? And uh, how many Montanan children or teenagers or whatever are doing this? I don't know. The state may have to prove evidence of that. Like instead of just saying it, show that there are actually teenagers in Montana who are doing this stuff and some number of them. And what is the burden? You know, are they only on TikTok or is this just sort of a, smokescreen that they're they're using as an excuse and then for the chinese uh data monitoring thing they is the burden greater than the benefit of that and it's kind of hard to say the court will just kind of look at it and decide um do i want to jump in here um a lot of these decisions are political even though they don't sound like they would be courts often do make decisions on the basis of politics um that really is the biggest problem for tiktok here is i think that uh the decision you, we can sit here and argue this, but ultimately what a court does is influenced heavily by what uh, the, the judge's sort of political views are and also what the, 
the political views of like the parties in general are. So when both parties are saying, I want to do this, um, all the judges may think, hey, let's do it. And so when it go, it will be the Supreme Court deciding this. And so will they just be like, I don't care. They can just put mush in there and be like, oh, this law, in, you know, they can make everything specific to TikTok, TikTok, all their decisions in ways that would not affect basically any other company. Um, so I don't know. Now, it'll be a long time before this goes up there and it may get, uh, what may happen is that they may, a judge may impose a stay. A stay is something that says, yes, the law is here, but no, you can't stop people from using TikTok until we go through the legal process, which be years. Um, but we'll see. Um, and then this, th in this case is, uh, citing sort of all the cases that where they did not, uh, re reject sales bans. Uh, they, they allowed people to ban or California ban like shark fin sales, um, horse meat importation and sales. And the courts basically like, look, these very similar laws have been upheld. And so this one too. Um, and then, then they say, oh, you could do less burdensome things. But then this is one thing, if, while, while the burden, the, the alternative thing was something on the First Amendment, for the, com the Dormant Commerce Clause, it does not have that requirement of imposing the least burdensome requirement. You can just kind of do, if, if it's not excessive interference with internet or, or with national uh, interstate commerce, then you, uh, you don't have to show like, oh, I could have done something less to, to defeat a uh, Commerce Clause challenge. So two different laws, different stand or not, not laws, two different... Uh, clauses in the constitution and two different uh ways to analyze them so that that is the current night circuit Cir law on this it's not really instructive directly but it is instructive in terms of like what will people be arguing about this law so if you're an influencer should you be concerned about this well if you're not on tiktok uh then i don't think this is they're not really coming for you i think the real motivation behind all this they are saying all this stuff about the trends or whatever but the real motivation is concern about the chinese government having all our data and like blackmailing people and just stealing stuff from your phones and doing things like that. Uh, there really, uh, there probably is a lot of potential for that. So uh, personally, I think making them sell it may be a good idea, but, but uh, banning it uh, pretty extreme. And uh, this is, if you're on TikTok, if you're a TikToker, should you, are you wasting your time? I guess is the thing. Well, we don't know. Um, I, I do personally think that probably this will, the, the negotiated solution at the end of all this will be, either outright sale of TikTok to someone else or a ton of restrictions on what they can do with the data that someone not in the company is monitoring. So this may just all kind of go around and, you know, um, if you're in Montana, you may, I don't know, you may be, uh, you may be driving someplace else to install TikTok. It doesn't look like they're going to go in your phone and uh, do stuff to it or take it off. Or I don't, I don't, I don't know what an iPhone user will do. Uh, you may have to buy an Android phone. You may have to go someplace else where you can, or, or like spoof your IP address with a VPN. Um, it seems like that would be able to get around this ban pretty easily if you, if you have a VPN, because I know Apple is not going to like kick TikTok off entirely. Um, all these big companies will be fighting it. You're going to have a lot of pressure, uh, not to have this pass because part of the problem I think too, is once you open this door, um, it opens the door to other laws that are going to be worse than this. And so they may have a, a legitimate case on TikTok, but um, if the government can start doing stuff like this or state governments can start doing stuff like this, you can have this crazy like <laughs> quilt of regulations that you know, a patchwork quilt, like a quilt has different squares everywhere, right? So it's trying to figure out how to make a nationwide app becomes like an impossibility. I do think it's extremely burdensome to have states deciding this. And I do think, frankly, the federal government should probably be the one deciding this uh, given the interstate commerce clause. Um, it, it just makes more sense. Um but you don't know. I mean, people in Montana may end up not being able to use this for a while, um, you know, or, or not easily. Uh, we'll see. There's not a, you know, it's a relatively smaller population, but other states may decide to do the same thing. And there's larger states where this could affect things more. Um, and and I, it's, they are going to keep trying to do it. Um, so, you know, <laughs> I would diversify. I would always say, frankly, even if you are a social media influencer, get on more than one platform. Uh, don't put all your eggs in the basket. Uh, these things are changing all the time. Ownership is changing. We just saw Twitter change ownership. We just, they changed their algorithms. You never know. And it can't hurt you to have other ways to reach your fan base. And so uh, we will see what, what, what happens with this. If, if you like the video, if you want more legal analysis, or and I do a bunch of stuff about kind of crazy celebrity lawsuits and uh, just uh, detailed legal explanations of this stuff. And a lot of it touches on what influencers want to know uh, because a lot of these lawsuits are now nowadays between influencers or from uh, against influencers. And so... Uh, hit the subscribe button or there's probably some videos popping around here, uh, suggestions from the end screen things. 
So click one of those and you can just keep watching.